This particular discourse, I'm going to entitle it, Is Warfare Necessary? Now, when I speak about warfare, I want to emphasize not something out there someplace or something in some other place, but I'm talking about the warfare that goes on inside of you, inside of your family, inside of the relationships that you may have with other people, conflicts between people at work, conflicts between politicians, conflicts between businesses, conflicts between countries, religions, etc. So the question here is, is war inevitable? The answer is probably yes. There is something intrinsic to our nature, given our evolutionary background, it goes back throughout the entire animal kingdom and even to reptilian stages, that seems to indicate that life has an intrinsic need for war, for conflict. We also have an intrinsic need for conflict resolution. So let me personalize this. I'd like you to think about those situations in your life where you have felt that you have been in conflict or some kind of warfare with some other person, some other institution, some particular philosophy. And I, I, want, I, want, to, I want to address that question because I know warfare seems to be something distasteful for most people. So let's take a look at the need, at why warfare seems to be endemic to our species and other species. All right, let's take the family for existence, for, for example. A brother and a sister, they grow up in the same family. The mother or the father or somebody in the family is seriously disturbed. It has an effect on the structure of the family. Anytime you have a disturbance, some kind of warfare that goes on inside the brain of someone, it affects everybody else. And there are secondary victims of that kind of internal warfare. So we all kind of play part in a system that encourages or uses warfare as a potential solution to problems of power. What I have seen with the human species is that the human species has language. For some reason, in the, in the history of evolution, we gave up our physical strength and focused our power techniques and methods on the power of speech itself. If you ever go by a, a place where you hear a congregation of people or a group of people talking, you'll hear a tremendous din of spoken language. Brrr, mutter, 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 grumble, grumble, grumble. People talk. The spoken word, the spoken word is extremely powerful and we use words for, for power needs. We use words to communicate, we use words to attack, we use words to defend, we use words to offend. So, as I have your attention and you're focusing on the inevitable need for warfare, let's look at the aspects of warfare. Who are the peacemakers? Who are the ones who arbitrate? Who are the negotiators? Who are the problem solvers? One of the difficulties with warfare between individuals, especially in families, is they seem to stay problem-focused rather than solution-focused. There seems to be some need to keep the energy revolving in the inflammation of warfare. Let me use a metaphor. We live on, on a planet that has underneath the crust earthquake capabilities. We live on a planet that has volcanoes. For most of the time, these particular earthquake zones, these volcanic zones, they're calm. Just like most people, we function in a calm state. But sooner or later, an earthquake erupts inside of us, or a volcano explodes. And if you're anywhere in the vicinity, vicinity of the outpouring of invective, you're going to get singed and burned. Strategy. You don't have to be available. You don't have to make the decision to be involved in becoming a target. You can set up your circumstances so that you are not in the direct vicinity of a volcanic explosion from somebody who's intent on creating a power struggle with you, a form of warfare. You don't have to be available. However, if you find yourself in a circumstance 
where you are in a situation and you can't avoid being there, there are certain strategies you need to adapt. One, try not to be overreactive. Two, you can choose whether to attack back, to counterattack, to punish, to in invoke invec invectus, <laughs> negative language on somebody, especially if someone's accusing you or name calling. They're calling you all kinds of names or accusing you of things that you don't even think are true. Remember, human beings are myth makers. We create myths out of situations and we treat them sometimes as if they are facts. Okay, so what, what, are, what are some of the solutions and strategies we can use to diffuse a situation? First, I mentioned you don't have to be available. Second, you need to find somebody who can arbitrate, a judge, a referee, to be able to sit between the two parties and set out a principle. Are you going to negotiate? Are we seeking peace? Are we seeking resolution? Are we going to discontinue the invective? Are you interested in getting along so that at social occasions, you and the rest of the people involved, especially your family, can have a good time? Okay, right. So the, the, the principle here is how to keep from getting triggered, how to keep from getting your buttons pushed, how, from, how to keep from getting those hot spots activated. You have a choice of who you allow into your life. Just remember what I just said, a choice. Whatever choices you make to allow people into your presence, into your, 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 your what do you call it, your arena, your platform, you have a choice who you allow in. You have a choice about who you open your door to. You don't want to let anyone cross your boundaries who may surprise you with a surprise attack. And sometimes this will happen when you're not even prepared for it. You never know where a surprise attack is going to come from because this is also endemic to human behavior. The strike first, the, the, the principle, the strategy of hitting first, fast, and by surprise. 9-11 is an example. So you know that in your interactions with other people, you may be subject to a preemptive strike by somebody's verbal inv infected, infection, whatever. They're bad words. Okay, you got that? All right. Oh, boy, I'll tell you right now. I'm really on a roll. <laughs> I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. <laughs> well, let's think, let's think about this. You have a decision who you let into your life. Now, you, there are no such thing as perfect decisions. However, the more experience you have in making very wise and intelligent decisions, the better are your chances of bringing people into your sphere of influence who will bring nothing but good fortune and good feelings to you. You bring someone into your life and into your arena who has disturbed thinking who has negative thinking and poor behavior, you are going to be subjecting yourself to verbal onslaughts, insults, attacks. Are you prepared to deal with that? Have I given you something to think about? We'll talk again soon.